channel. So a while back ago, probably like a month ago, I made two videos where I was talking about my experience being homeless. So you guys left some questions in the video. Some of you guys reached out to me on Instagram and asked me questions in regards to being homeless. So I decided, hey, why not do a Q&A video, you guys? This is going to be my first Q&A video. <laughs> Look at me moving on up, y'all. I'm so excited to do this. Sucks that it has to be specifically on being homeless, but hey, we got a Q&A video. So I put all your questions that you guys have asked me on my phone in notepads, and I decided, let me go ahead and get this out the way. So the first question that I received, did you go to a shelter? Definitely, yes. I did go to a shelter because um, I was trying to get into like some type of program so that way... I could prove that I'm homeless, that way I could get some type of assistance as far as getting like a security deposit and all that stuff. Yes, I did go to a homeless shelter and they did get me into a program since I did have some type of income. So I got into a, um, a transitional living program. So this question is something that everybody keep asking me is, are you still homeless? No, I have not been homeless since... December 1st, 2017, that's when I first moved into that house and I started getting back on YouTube and everything was going great. So it's been a while since I've been homeless. I've been close to being homeless again. Like there was a, a video where I talked about like, oh, my landlord like put our house up on the market and I was really stressed because I had to leave the house and I didn't know what to do. I didn't even have time to start preparing or anything and I'm like, I'm, I'm low on money and all that. So I did end up going back to um staying in an airbnb for like a month and then after that i ended up going to arizona the next question is why didn't you go home so i didn't go home because i wanted to stay there and focus on my career i was already at that point where i've been meeting people i was auditioning consistently like Many times throughout the month, like I was auditioning, I was meeting people, I was going on set, I was learning things as far as career wise. I was like happy like that I was there because I was able to focus on my career. I wasn't happy due to the circumstances, but I was happy that I was focusing on my career. So that's why I didn't go home. I knew that if I went home, like I wouldn't have been miserable i wouldn't been able to focus on my career i would just been stuck working a nine to five life and you know then i have people like oh like i told you so or you should have did this and you should have that did that and blah 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 you know how negative people could be so i didn't go home because of that i wanted to really go out there and i wanted to fight and i wanted to focus on my career next question is did you move to la by yourself Yes, I didn't know anyone when I moved to LA. Like, I had no friends, no family, no nothing. I met Niche actually on Facebook through a group. So it was like I had her. But then after she had left, like, I was pretty much on my own. And I kind of had to figure things out, you know, on my own. Yeah. <laughs> she left me down there to suffer by myself. Where did you sleep? Okay, so when I first got homeless, I slept in my car, and then after that, I went to a shelter, and then from there, I was put into a transitional living home, and I stayed there mostly, but a huge area that I really, 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 really stayed at the most was at an Airbnb. I'd rather pay money to stay in an Airbnb than go to a freaking shelter or be in a transitional living arrangement because it was the worst experience of my life. I don't like being controlled. And also, I did go to um, motels. So there's motels where you could do like an extended stay kind of thing and you pay weekly to stay there. So you'll pay like around $270 for a week there. So yeah, that's what I did. Why didn't you go to a friend's place? Everybody tends to ask me that question. This is the thing when it comes to this topic. When I first didn't know where I was going to go besides like when I didn't have my car and stuff anymore, I didn't know where I was going to go. What happened was I reached out to one of my friends at the time and 
I called her, she didn't answer. I texted her, she didn't respond back. So like, I think it was like 10 minutes after I texted her, I went on Snapchat and I saw two minutes prior she posted a snap and I'm like, really? Really? But you can't answer my call or my text message. She didn't even end up texting me back until the next evening and like, hey, where did you end up going? And I was just like, dang, homie. She was like, I'm sorry. Like, I got off work late last night. Real. So that was one reason. Another thing is I had another friend that I asked and she said yes. And that I could spend a night at her house. But when we got around the corner to her house, her mom said I couldn't stay there because she didn't know me. And so her mom suggested that I go to some shelters not too far away. And so from that point on, I felt like I lost a friend because she was so embarrassed and she already said yes. And then her mom comes and says no. And she felt so bad. And from that point on, it was like we haven't been friends. And I tried to reach out to her and talk to her. And I told her it's not her fault. But she just. It was like it was over, you know, it was over. We can't even try to be friends because I just feel like she's probably going to always think about that. It sucks to lose a friend, but yeah, it happens. And another reason is I don't want to um, be a reason that my friends lose their living arrangements. Like being in a situation where I stayed at an apartment where the manager was literally watching the security cameras like she didn't have a freaking life. Like I didn't want to be the reason my friends lose their homes and things like that and get in the situation because I wouldn't want to wish homelessness on no one. So I just tried to nah, not let that happen. I did have an incident. I kind of talked about like the whole roommate story and how I originally became homeless. So if you haven't checked that out, because that's a question on here that somebody asked, um, definitely check that out. I talk about how like after I had ended up leaving that place and she thought about me for a job, she let me stay at her place and then she literally lied and say like, oh, I didn't say you could stay here longer than this and this, that, and the other. Why would I say that knowing our apartment manager is crazy? And I'm like, girl, you literally said this. Like, why would I put myself in this situation again? Like, she was making it like I was a liar. It was like, now that her roommate had called her out, like, you know, I feel like you lie somebody lying to me. She's telling me one thing and you telling me something else I don't know who to believe and so with her sitting here lying and saying oh you can stay here as long as you need to I will go talk to the apartment manager and x y and z like why you freaking lie why you freaking lie on me I, I hate that people be lying and switching up real quick and it's just like you never know who's your real friends and who have your back until you go through shit especially in LA like you don't know what's genuine and what's not. How long were you homeless? I was homeless from like July 1st, 2016 all the way to December 1st, 2017. So that's a long ass time. That's like a year and a half. Um, how did you get out of being homeless? So I was unemployed for a minute and I ended up getting a job at Target. And so I was like, I cannot keep staying at this transitional home. I can't keep spending all my money on Airbnb. Like, I really wanted to get back on track as far as focusing on my career, building my YouTube channel, all that stuff. So I was like really miserable at this point. And so I did, oh, oh my gosh, I was really, really miserable, you guys. So um, I ended up getting a job at Target and... I ended up saving two of my paychecks like towards in November like after I went on Facebook and I found like people who were looking for a roommate and I was like oh this is affordable I could definitely do this so I saved two of my paychecks and with those two paychecks I was able to move in on December 1st so I found them sometime in November and then I moved in December 1st did you use government assistance yes I definitely did I had EBT um, when I first got EBT, it was really easy. I got it like that, like that same day, the money was on my EBT card and I was able to go get food. The second time I had applied because I didn't have EBT anymore, um, 
they gave it to me for a month and I didn't get it instantly. I literally had to call in and be one of those people that had to turn up and like, look, I want to speak to your supervisor and speak to the supervisor in order for them to give me the EBT, like the money on EBT. Yeah. I did think about doing the social security part where they also put money, they put cash on your EBT card so you could go to an ATM and withdraw the money. I was planning on doing that, but in order to do that, it's like a whole process in order to do it. So, um, it was like this class that you had to attend. It was like 30 days. You had to go there. You had to, um... First, I went to orientation. You had to go there. You had to fill out job applications. Get on their computer, fill out job applications. Um, if you were, like, walking down the street and you saw, oh, Marshalls is hiring, then you got to grab the paper application and you have to go to, when you go to class, you fill it out inside the class instead of filling it out while you're right here at Marshalls and giving it to a manager. You had to take it there so that way they could make sure you did it correctly and also give you credit and I was like see this is the thing that was pissing me off because I'm not stupid I know how to fill out a job application I don't need you checking over my work and seeing if I'm doing this correctly it's one thing if there's people that don't know how to do it but don't knock on someone when they're low because if you do that they're going to feel like do they think I'm stupid that's and that's honestly like I didn't even go through the program I said forget it so the next question is how did you sleep in the car so it was pretty uncomfortable at first I had to learn how to do it um there were times when I would just put my seat back the driver's seat just lean it back like this and I go to sleep go and sometimes like when I need to stretch my legs out like I would put my seat down and I have my legs like in the trunk because I had a Toyota Prius so I put my legs in the trunk part and sleep that way or sometimes I just have still have my seat up and while I'm in the back seat and I'll just put my legs like on the um the glove department and then I just go to sleep that way like is you just have to play around with it to figure out what's comfortable and what's not comfortable for you will you move back to LA yes I will definitely move back to LA this time I mean of course I'm gonna go there with the job and be prepared but I want to have like a side hustle together so that's why I like part of the reason my lash line I wanted to start before moving back to LA um, I will want to move back to LA because I feel like I was able to audition more than in Atlanta like it was just consistent auditions and stuff and putting myself out there and networking and I just felt like I was happier there opposed to Atlanta it's just like what did you do for money so outside um, when I had a job that when I didn't have a job what I used was handy and I also did like Grubhub I'm not Grubhub Postmates and um Uber and Lyft and yeah mostly handy and sitting in the audience of like game shows talk shows and things like that that was my main source of income question I just asked did you have a job yes I had a job but there was times where I kept getting laid off there's like this thing down there in that freaking state. I don't know why, but you'll have a job for a minute and then out of nowhere, they'll just let you go. And you're just like, what? So you just feel like used and abused. How did you stay confident? Okay, so that is a really good question. Staying confident is really hard when you're going through so, so much stuff. And especially that situation when you're in a predicament where you're around so many negative people and personalities. Like when you go to a homeless shelter or when you're in transitional homes, like there's so many people with different personalities and you're just like, oh my gosh, these people are crazy. Like they're not normal. And it's just like more so like I feel like mental health wise. But um, and, uh, and of course drugs and alcohol, people do that. But it's like you're in a negative environment all the time. So I try to remove myself from that area. So say, for instance, like if I didn't have to go to work, like um, Raven, go to the library, go hang out with a friend, go do something else. Like, you know, just to stay away from that environment. That was really important for me. So another thing that I did was you guys know the TV show Star. So Star is basically the start of when I became homeless and basically 
Um, I went to high school with Ryan Destiny. When I was a senior, she was a freshman. And I remember seeing her in her eighth grade um, choir concert at her middle school. Because she went to school with my sisters and stuff as well. So, I watched Star to support a fellow alumni of WBHS. I'm looking like, wow, we got all these celebrities that went to WBHS come through. But Ryan, like... I really love the fact that she was on, like, this black-owned show, you know? It was so good. It's just, uh, I felt like it was kind of not fully my life, but it was my life in the simple fact that I moved to a place, I don't know anybody, and I'm trying to make it on my own. And in the midst of this, I have so many obstacles. And so... Going through that while watching this show and watching them go through their issues, it really kept me going. Seeing somebody that once walked the floors of West Bloomfield High School and she is on a big television show with like my celebrity crushes, like my favorite people, my favorite meeting my favorite singer, Brandy, like, you know, all this stuff and she's doing so well. It just really motivated me to keep on going so that way I can get to that point one day like I remember it was an episode it was an episode when they were singing um oh it's and I didn't find it it's called hold on when I heard it the I was in the library that day and um I had just watched Empire and I remember the guy who played Andre he did a monologue and it was so freaking good like it reminded me why I want to be an actress so bad and, like, I cried watching that, okay? I, like, his monologue made me cry. So then right after that, Star came on, and they were singing Hold On. And I, it was really funny because right before I started watching those two shows, like, I broke down, and I started crying, and I was praying. And then for that to happen where I'm reminded why I want to be an actress, and then they played that song, it was just, I felt like it was God telling me, Hold on, Raven. Your time is coming, girl. So that pushed me a lot more. Also, doing audience work, um, a lot of times I would go to Steve Harvey. And I remember the first time I went to Steve Harvey show, I actually wasn't homeless at the time. I was actually doing really, really good. I was out of homelessness, okay? But I remember I went to Family Feud and Steve Harvey... Every time you go to any of his shows, he gives like this motivational speech about his life being homeless. He talks about like if you go on YouTube and you put in Steve Harvey jump, everything he say in jump is what he say every single time on set. Like before he leaves the set and he say goodbye, you guys, he makes sure he tells you like, look. I was homeless, God got me through this, God got a plan, had a plan for me, and this, that, and the other, blah, 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 and he was, he'd was he be like, write division, make it plain, and I was like, oh my goodness, because I grew up in church, you guys know, my dad's a pastor, so I used to hear that song all the time, and now, living in LA, and you don't hear that song anymore, they have different type of music, like, black churches is not the same like it is, but at least what I'm used to you know there it's like a whole different dynamic and so I wasn't li used to listening to like our music like that anymore so right division make it plain used to be like one of my favorite songs I still love that song and so he talked about it right division make it plain and I was like oh my gosh like it was just a reminder like you know Raven God got you like and that was the main thing was just remembering that this is just a test of my faith and God and remembering that God give his toughest battles to his strongest warriors and so to me it was like Raven you got this God got your back he didn't give you this hunger and this talent for no reason he knows your pain he knows your struggle he seen you crying you know it hurts to see you crying God got you don't stress. So that was what really kept me going. I was not trying to preach to you guys, but that really, really, really kept me going. Did my family know that I was homeless? So my mom did. 
and she was pissed off and she kept trying to get me to come back. She was trying to help me too as much as she could. Um, but she had her own bills and all that stuff that she got to take care of. And so it was understandable. Um, my, some of my family did know that I stayed in my car and they were pissed off at me. But they never knew that it got to the extent. You guys know more than they do. They, they don't even know that I went to a shelter. They don't. Okay. I will be hearing it forever if they find out that I went to a shelter. So I didn't tell them um, because I don't like to ask people for help. I hate it. And it's not like my ego and my pride and stuff like that. Like on my mom's side of the family, I have someone that has money. And that person is that type of person that like feeds off of putting you down. And it's just like she gets so much excitement out of it. And she was like, I told you so, and this, that, and the other, and, you know, you need to be, I'm going to put you on a payment plan or a budget, and you got to do this, and you got to do that, and I get, like, if um, I'm going to help, like, I'm going to pay you back and stuff, but, like, don't really knock me down when I'm down, and when my mom was down, when she was going through, like, her divorce with my dad, like, I just saw this person put my mom down so much. And I just was like, you know what, like that right there made me not want to ever ask people for help because my mom reached out to this person for help and this person kept knocking her down and tried to keep her down. And when my mom kept trying to escape from her, like, she like, why you do this? I want you to do that? Blah, blah, blah. But like, cause I already saw her, like she was controlling somebody else that's in their family and that person it made it hard for them to leave and they've grown like to branch out and do their own thing so I didn't want her to or anyone to have any type of control over me were you scared of living in your car when I first started living in my car like I was not really scared I was nervous because I didn't know what was a, like a safe area to sleep in your car. I was worried about people seeing me, police driving by, somebody coming up to the window. Yeah, that. But then once I had moved to going and staying at the gym, the 24-hour gym, I was comfortable because the police station was right next door. There's like a little airport right there as well. And also like there were a few other people that was living in their car and they were there as well. So I felt more comfortable being in a secure area. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, let me know if you guys have any questions, any more questions that I didn't answer or I may have missed. I will reply. You guys know me. I always reply back to all my comments. So leave a comment below of your questions and I will definitely get back to you. And I want to thank you guys for watching and bye.